right so, there in the back, and it will come. Okay, so you touched on, on something, uh, the national debt. In 1913, the establishment of the Federal Reserve, yeah. monetary policy associated with that, the World War One, World War Two, the reason for the adoption of the Federal All the way through Iraq. So every time, <clears throat> to me, monetary policy actually points to all the ailments that we have, all the things like the, the countless wars, endless wars. We had a um, so-called expert economist come to Washington. Yep. The uh, late 90s is when they really <coughs> yeah, took well, on steroids. Well, it's going to eventually get to there anyway. It has to. You yep. can borrow money into circulation and you, you know, don't create the principal to pay back. Yep. Or create the interest to pay back on the principal, then you, know, you fail. That's, anyway, this economist came last July and pointed out that um, our national debt is $30 trillion. And the amount of money, M1, and all that stuff yep. combined, bringing it back home from overseas and all that stuff, was $28 trillion. So if tomorrow the federal government said 100% tax, we would be $2 trillion short. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to overcome this? I mean, I think monetary policy by far is yeah. the clearest indication. And you, you mentioned national debt. So, so if we don't have the money, how are we going to pay it back? Well, first is, first is let's actually just buy down the national debt right away. And so I want to, it's going to take a CEO in the White House to get this done. And the Republican Party basically, much of it has become the party of America last. Cut Social Security and veterans benefits to shift $200 billion more to Ukraine so some kleptocrat can buy a bigger house. We've got that backwards. Okay, so here's the way I'm going to get it done. And I want to tell you what kind of time horizon we're working with here. It's about five years. When the interest payments on our national debt become the largest line item in our federal budget, then we're in quicksand, right? There's no way out. I don't think we have a country left. And that's what gives me my sense of urgency now. It's going to take a president who, yes, is a businessman, yes, is a CEO, but also understands the Constitution. So what I just mentioned to this gentleman here, literally, if you get the oil and natural gas out of our ground, we buy and then we sell it in the market, we literally instantly buy down about $8 trillion of our national debt. The national debt number is actually not 30, it's about 34 trillion right now. Seven trillion of that, though, came from two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan that did not advance the American interest. For God's sake, the Taliban is still in charge right. 20 years later. And Iraq is a more broken country than when we showed up. That's a bipartisan failure. Right. If we avoid repeating those same mistakes in places like Ukraine, we at least avoid the next seven trillion of that that would have been added. Then that 75% mass firing in the federal government. That's a lot of where those budgetary demands, not just for the headcount costs, but for the budget demands. That's where they come from. I'll tell you what my day one could look like. Something like this is what it has to be. If your social security number ends in an odd number and you're in the federal bureaucracy, you're out. If it's an even number, you're in. <laughs> Mass firing. On day two, I promise you, not a thing is going to break. The sun's still going to rise in the east and set in the west. Not a thing is going to break. The federal government will be half its size. And it has to be done this way. They actually duped Donald Trump. He came in to drain the swamp, but they said, sir, you can't fire these bureaucrats because they're subject to civil service protections. That applied not to the military, but to civil servants. Read the law. Those civil service protections do not apply to mass firings. Mass firings are what I'm bringing to the D.C. bureaucracy. <coughs> so everything I told you, that gets our national debt under control, well under $20 trillion. Then we take the next step of what I do is reform the Federal Reserve with a 90% headcount reduction there, and peg the dollar to commodities again. We used to have the gold standard, we're gonna do that again. Gold, silver, nickel, agricultural commodities. That's how we get the job done. And you know what, part of the problem is you got 23,000 people at the Federal Reserve showing up to work who should have never had that job. They start finding things to do. That's where, for those of you who are aware of it, the central bank digital currency comes from, the CBDC, which is then a threat to liberty. So hopefully that answers your question. It's going to take somebody from the outside to get this job done. That's my responsibility to you, and I'm confident we can see that through. We'll go there and we'll come back to